I know this seems crazy, but the best base layer you could use is actually fishnet. But don't just take my word for it, take Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing's. To use the mesh as their chosen base layer for the first ever summit of Everest in 1953. I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look warm at all. So here's a new perspective that might just blow your mind. So let me explain how this makes sense as it really seems counterintuitive. Let's say you spill water on your counter. With a sponge, you can place it on the water and it's absorbed up. And this is really important because if you have wet skin or clothing, it can make you colder up to 25 times faster than if it were dry. So this is the first way a common base layer keeps you warm. It removes sweat away from your skin and keeps you dry. Now let's say instead of a sponge, we use a paper towel. It doesn't absorb as much water as the sponge, but it does spread the water over a larger surface area, meaning it could evaporate and dry out faster. And that's the second thing base layers do. They act as this paper towel, spreading out the moisture molecules and then your body heat evaporates them away. There's just one problem. During hard activity, base layers can easily get overwhelmed by a lot of sweat and completely saturated. Then when you stop moving, the cold sets in. Now, some materials like wool can retain most of their insulation even when wet, which is amazing. But what if there's a way of avoiding wetness altogether? Enter the fishnet base layer which has a long history of use in countries like Norway, where they really value functional properties of gear, especially in the winter, and is sadly less popular in countries that focus on advertising, marketing, and sponsored videos to help you select your gear. Now, the secret to why these work so well is in the open mesh weave. It basically has a bunch of holes in it, which is totally different from what we're used to, which is this, a closed mesh weave. The same thing as like your t-shirt that you're wearing right now. Now, if you've ever carried a backpack and then did something active, you'll know the first place you sweat that never quite dries off is on your back because the clothing is sandwiched from the backpack against your skin. Now, if you instead hike with a mesh base layer against your skin, then a shirt or closed weave base layer over it, the sweat never actually sits on your skin because it's transferred instantly onto the layer above the mesh. So whether you're using the mesh in the hot sun with a backpack on or while summiting Everest, even as your outside layer gets soaked, your skin stays dry. So not only does this keep you warmer, but it's also more comfortable. You don't get that clammy wetness that you feel when you're absolutely soaked or it's really humid out. But wait, what about insulation? How can something with holes in it actually keep you warmer? Well, first, let's look at how insulation actually works. Insulation on a closed weave, remember non-mesh, base layer actually comes from the material's thickness. Insulation works by trapping dead air in air pockets. That's why down, for example, is some of the best insulation because it's lightweight and it traps the most dead air. That dead air acts as a barrier between your warm body and the cold outside, for instance. But the negative of that means that generally the thicker the insulation, the heavier the material. Mesh, on the other hand, works by forming warm air pockets between the weaves. Now there's going to be dead space between your skin, the mesh layer, and then the layer over top, which provides insulation just like a down pocket does. The result is that you get four to six times more warmth for the weight of mesh than you do with other closed weave base layers. But that's not nearly all of the benefits. Mesh additionally gives you the ability to regulate your body temperature. Let's say you're hiking up a hill with a closed weave base layer. Your skin has all the heat trapped close to the body. With exertion, you're gonna get hotter faster, especially at certain spots like the armpits, for example. In essence, some parts were heating up fast and some parts are slower, so it's completely uneven. The mesh, on the other hand, allows air to circulate more freely when you want it to. Your skin doesn't overheat as fast because the closed weave isn't directly against you. You have that air buffer to keep everything consistent. Then, rapid cooling is even faster. You just open up your shell layer and allow that fresh air to sweep directly against your skin. In the description of this video, you'll find a 2013 study which finds the actual material, wool versus synthetic, doesn't matter as much as the weave type does. So it's actually the most important factor and really never talked about because the marketing bucks aren't behind it. So instead of buying multiple base layers in different thicknesses for each type of activity and material, your very best value is getting one mesh set for all of your active states. And then when extra insulation is needed in really cold times or when you stop 
moving your second closed weave base layer over top. This is the best scenario to cover every activity and even sleep in your sleeping bag. And it's essential for any activities where you're active for a time and then pause. Like skiing, hiking, hunting, winter camping, snowshoeing, and wildlife photography. The list goes on. Now this video is entirely not sponsored. Nobody paid me to do this. All this research is just my own on the stuff that I actually use. So you could go out there and get any base layer you want. What I recommend is the mesh base layer with a clothes weave over top and that covers everything you could possibly do. Now the mesh is kind of hard to find in North America. The one I use, I've linked below. And yeah, I hope this is helpful. I hope you learned something. I'm DJ from The Bear Essentials and thank you for stopping by.